Hello friends, welcome to the Pathology Insights. Today in this video, I'll be discussing about the morphology and the prognostic factors of the breast carcinoma. In my previous videos, I have already finished about the etiopathogenesis and uh, classifications of the breast carcinoma and also the ductal carcinoma in situ. So in this video, I'll be discussing about the morphology of the breast carcinomas. Now, before going into the morphology, just to have uh, brief about the carcinomas as we all know invasive carcinomas they have been classified depending uh, in two types we have a class of two types of the classification that is molecular classification and morphologic classification and if you remember the molecular classification we have luminal A, luminal B, HER2 rich and uh, basal type which is a triple negative. Now the morphological classification it has been again broadly divided into no special type and the special type. So in this we have invasive uh, breast carcinoma ductal, no special type. And in the special type we have all these types of the malignancies that is papillary carcinoma, lobular carcinoma, tubular carcinoma, medullary carcinoma, inflammatory carcinoma, mucinous carcinoma, metaplastic, cribriform carcinomas and some other rare variants are also there which we will be seeing So coming to the first type that is uh, infiltrating uh, carcinoma, no special type ductal. Now this is uh, ductal adenocarcinoma, adenocarcinoma arising from the ductal epithelial cells. And uh, grossly when we see uh, it will be hard and irregular. You see uh, if you see the margins it is an irregular mass hard in the consistency and uh, hard to form in the consistency because this tumor will have more of the desmoplastic stroma. Desmoplastic stroma means it has more collagenous stroma so it will be formed to heart and even it will have calcifications. So in the tumor we have the calcifications also. So when we see in the mammography it appears as a radiodense mass with calcifications and because of the calcifications when we are uh, doing the sectioning of the uh, of this uh, mastectomy specimen there will be gritty sensation gritty sensation because of the presence of this calcifications and if the tumor is present in the central quadrant of the breast just below the nipple and the areola because of the more uh, fibrous tissue there can be retraction of the nipple also so grossly when we see the consistency it is firm to hard in consistency with the irregular margins and it has a calcifications Now when we see the microscopically the pattern of the uh, pleomorphic ductal cells they will be arranged in the glandular pattern either in the glandular pattern or they can be present as a solid sheets or they can be present as a single tumor cells or cots. So any, uh, any of these patterns can be present in the infiltrative carcinoma no special type and one important thing is the stroma will be in the stroma in between these tumor cells it will be desmoplastic now desmoplastic uh, reaction means the tumor cells itself they will be producing collagenous stroma so more collagenous deposition will be present in between the tumor cells so this is uh, the microscopic features we have a desmoplastic stroma and the cells can be arranged in the glandular pattern solid sheets cords or individually dispersed pattern now that was about the no special type. Now from here it is about the special type of the invasive carcinomas. So if you remember the lobular carcinoma we have already discussed in the NC2 that the main pathogenesis is the loss of E. catherine. Now E. catherine is a transmembrane protein which is useful for the maintenance of the adhesion between the cells. Now when there is a loss of the E. catherine obviously the adhesion is lost and that there will be discohesiveness of the tumor cells because of this the tumor cells they will be present as in single cells they don't form glandular pattern in the lobular carcinoma now this is the microscopic picture so uh, here we have a uniform population of the cells this is another feature of the lobular carcinoma we have a uniform population of the cells which will be predominantly present as individually dispersed pattern or in the Indian file pattern a linear row of the cells what you are seeing 
that we call it as an indian file pattern now they call it as an indian file pattern because this pattern is named after uh, the north americans so whenever they used to go the people used to uh, walk in a single row one after the other so seeing them they named it as an indian file pattern and another pattern what we see here is a targetoid pattern so we have a benign duct in the center surrounding which we have the tumor cells which are arranged in a concentric fashion so this is a targetoid pattern these two patterns we see in the lobular carcinoma and another important feature is we see the signet ring cells cells with signet ring cell morphology signet ring cells means we have eccentrically pushed nucleus and we have a mucin vacuole in the cytoplasm so these are the features microscopic features of the lobular carcinoma we have an indian file pattern we have a targetoid pattern and we have signet ring cells and remaining also we have a monotonous population of the cells and in this uh, lobular carcinoma necrosis and calcifications we don't say it's very rare and another important thing is how it differs from the ductal carcinoma is uh, the way it metastasizes it metastasizes as a ductal carcinoma and also it has a distinctive pattern of the spread it spreads retroperitoneally to the git and the adnexal structures like ovaries and the uterus and even it can go to the leptomeninges this is a specific pattern of the metastasis in the lobular carcinoma now next one is the medullary carcinoma uh, this carcinoma is associated with the brca1 but here uh, like in the ductal carcinoma we don't have the brca1 mutations instead we have the hypermethylation of the promoter region of the brca1 because of this hypermethylation there will be down regulation of the brca1 expression this is the main pathogenesis in this and uh, this medullary carcinoma it has a better prognosis from other poorly differentiated carcinomas this subtype has somewhat better prognosis now the it is uh, tumor it comprises less than 1% of the cases but in most of the invasive carcinomas we can see this uh, features the microscopic features we can see in some of the ductal carcinomas also and uh, this was named as medullary carcinoma because it was soft in the consistency so in the latin word marrow means medulla so they named it as medullary carcinoma why it is soft in consistency is here the tumor will not have the desmoplasia it has a minimal desmoplasia so as i told you in the invasive ductal carcinoma no special type the firmness of the tumor is because of the desmoplastic reaction increased collagen deposition so in the medullary carcinoma we have very minimal desmoplasia or absence of desmoplastic reaction so uh, we don't have any collagen stroma so the tumor will be soft and another important feature is grossly when we see the tumor is well circumscribed and it has a pushing borders whereas uh, when you see the infiltrating ductal carcinoma it has a irregular borders as if it's uh, infiltrating into the stroma here we have circumscribed mass with the pushing borders and microscopically the important feature is the tumor cells will be present like a sheets they will be present like a sheets and the pleomorphism also will be more and typically the cells will have prominent nucleoli in the nuclei if you see this uh, small dot like things in the nuclei they are the nucleoli so they have prominent nucleoli and atypical mitotic figures will be very high so these are the atypical mitotic figures i think already i have told you how to identify the atypical mitotic figures they um, it will be like a condensed chromatin which will have hair like projections on the surface so it can be present as a flower model or a leaf model clover leaf model or it can appear like a caterpillar so when you see these structures these are the atypical mitotic figures and you have increased mitotic figures in this tumors and another important feature is the sheets of uh, this tumor cells they will be surrounded by a band of lymphoplasma cytic infiltrate now the band will be present within the tumor in between the tumor also but specifically at the periphery of the tumor it has a diffuse lymphoplasma cytic infiltrate this is the characteristic feature of medullary carcinoma 
Next one is the mucinous carcinoma, also called as a colloid carcinoma. Now we have to remember that this mucinous areas we can see in normal uh, breast carcinomas also. That's in that case we cannot call it as a mucinous carcinoma. We should call it as a mucinous carcinoma only when more than 90% of the tumor is showing that mucinous component. Then only we can call it as mucinous carcinoma. And this one it constitutes 2% of the breast carcinomas. So this is a gross picture. When you see the gross features, it has it's well circumscribed. It will be soft and rubbery in the consistency and cut section because of the mucin, it appears as if it is gelatinous. So well circumscribed pushing borders with a gelatinous cut surface and consistency is soft and rubbery. And when you see the microscopy, we have the um, legs, pools of the mucin, pools or legs of the mucin we have. And in that pools of the mucin, we have the clusters of the tumor cells, clusters or islands of the tumor cells floating in the pools of the mucin. This is a classical presentation of this tumor. Next one is the tubular carcinoma. This comprises 2% to 6% of the uh, breast carcinomas and it has a favorable prognosis. This is the one which will be multicentric. If you remember, even the lobular carcinoma is also multicentric. It's also multifocal. And uh, grossly here, uh, it has a poor circumscription and it is hard in the consistency. Here again, it's hard in the consistency because the stroma will have more of the desmoplastic reaction. Okay, when we see histologically, as the name suggests, tubular carcinoma means most of the cells are arranged in the form of the tubules. But the specific feature of these tubules is they are angulated tubules. They have an irregular angulated contours. Okay, you see here they have an angulation. So this is the uh, typical feature of tubular carcinoma. And another thing is the cells which are forming the tubules, they will have minimal pleomorphism. And we see the apocrine snouts in the lumen. You see the small pink snouts. These are the apocrine snouts which are present in the lumen. This is another important characteristics. So we have the tumor cells with minimal pleomorphism. They form the glands which are having angulated counters. And we have the apocrine snouts towards the lumen. And another in this also in some areas we can even find the cribriform pattern also. So this is the feature of apocrine uh, tubular carcinoma. Sorry. Now next one is the papillary carcinoma. This is very rare. It comprises 0.5% to 0.7% of the breast carcinomas. And uh, similarly, we can find this papillary pattern in the normal invasive breast carcinomas also. A part of the invasive ductal carcinoma may show the papillary pattern, but we cannot call it as papillary carcinoma. The papillary pattern should be present more than 90% of the tumor. Then only we can call it as papillary carcinoma. Similar to like mucinous carcinoma, if more than 90% has a mucin, mucinous uh, component, then we call it as mucinous. Similarly, if more than 90% of the tumor has papillary structures, we call it as papillary carcinoma. And when we see microscopically, we see a predominantly the papillary structures, papillary fronts, which are lined by this tumor cells and the papillary uh, fronts will have the fibrovascular core. Next one is the apocrine carcinoma. It comprises 1% to 4% of the breast carcinomas and prognosis is better than invasive ductal carcinoma. And uh, as the name suggests, the cells, apocrine cells means they have abundant isnophilic granular cytoplasm. Okay, this is the classical presentation. They, the cells will be arranged as a sheets or glandular pattern and the cells will have abundant isnophilic granular cytoplasm. So in this actually we have two types of the cells. One cell, uh, the what I have described is the type A cells. And another type of the cells is the cells will have just the foamy cytoplasm. They are the type B cells. We can have both these cells in the apocrine carcinoma. This is also multicentric and it can present as a nodule in the cyst. So just remember apocrine, wherever the apocrine term comes, 
apocrine means the cells will, will be resembling the cells lining the sweat gland so they have abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm And another one is uh, the cribriform carcinoma. This comprises 1% to 3% of the breast carcinoma. It has excellent prognosis. And this cribriform carcinoma, it is related to the tubular carcinomas. So when you see microscopically, if you remember, we have uh, the islands of the cells which are having the angulated counters. And in that, we have well-defined punched out round spaces. So this pattern with a well-defined punched out rounded spaces, we call it as a cribriform pattern. And this spaces we see in the islands of the cells having angulated counters. And in that punched out spaces, even we find the apocrine snouts like as we see in the tubular carcinoma. That's why they tell that this is related to the tubular carcinoma. Also other rare types we have metaplastic carcinoma. So as the name suggests, metaplasia means either it is change of one epithelium to other or mesenchymal component, one type of mesenchymal component to other. So in the metaplastic carcinoma, the patient may develop uh, squamous cell carcinoma or, he, or she may develop matrix producing carcinomas like osteosarcomas or the fibrosarcomas. So then we call it as a metaplastic carcinoma. And another one is a micropapillary carcinoma. Here we have the tumor cells which are arranged in the form of a small papillae, clusters of the cells which appear as if they are papillae. So they form a pseudo papillae. I already told you the difference between true papillae and pseudo papillae. True papillae means we have a fibrovascular core in the papillae and the papillae will be lined by tumor cells. Pseudo papillae means they don't have any fibrovascular core. It is just the clusters of the cells which appear like a papillae. So here the cells will be arranged like a pseudo papillae or morules or like a hollow tubules which are surrounded by the empty spaces. And here another feature is we have a reverse polarity. So they will be present inside the cells will be present a differentiation will be to inside the basement membrane. Now other rare types of the carcinomas are secretory carcinomas, low grade adenosquamous carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma and the inflammatory carcinomas. So among all these carcinomas, the worst prognosis we have is for the inflammatory carcinomas and the best is for the cribriform carcinoma. Now for this invasive carcinomas, grading is also given. And the grading of the infiltrating carcinomas is done depending upon the Nottingham's histological score. We take the score, we add it, and then we give the grade. And that scoring is given depending upon the tubule formation, nuclear pleomorphism, and the mitotic rate. So if the tumor cells, more than 75% of the tumor is showing the tubule formation, the score will be 1. And if we have 10 to 75% of the tumor showing the gland formation, then it is 2. If just less than 10% of the tumor is showing gland formation, it is score is 3. Similarly, nuclear pleomorphism, if it is mild nuclear variation, it is score 1. Moderate, it is score 2. And marked, it is score 3. Then mitotic figures. If the mitotic figures are 0 to 5 per 10 high power fields, then it is score 1. Uh, I think you remember what I told you. These are the mitotic figures. Atypical mitotic figures, what you are seeing. So we have to count these atypical mitotic figures. So if they are 0 to 5 per 10 high power fields, it is score 1. If it is 6 to 11 per 10 high power fields, it is score 2. If it is more than 11 per 10 high power fields, it is score 3. So in this way, we have to take the scores depending upon these three features and then we have to add it. If the total score is 3 to 5, then it is grade 1, well differentiated carcinoma. If the score is between 6 to 7, then it is grade 2, moderately differentiated. If it is 8 to 9, then it is poorly differentiated, grade 3. Now next is about the staging of the breast carcinoma, depending upon the tumor size, lymph node status and the metastasis. Uh, depending upon the primary tumor size, T0 is if we cannot identify the tumor. TIS is if the patient has ductal carcinoma in situ or just the paged stasis of the nipple. Then T1 is if the tumor is 
less than 2 cm in the size. T2 is if the tumor size is in between 2 to 5. T3 is if it is more than 5 cm and T4 is when the tumor extends to the skin and the chest wall. So this is the primary uh, tumor size T. Then depending upon the lymph nodes, N0 is if there is no lymph node metastasis. N1 is if it is involving three axillary lymph nodes, less than three axillary lymph nodes, or if it is involving the ipsilateral mammary lymph nodes, that is N1. N2 is we have metastasis to the ipsilateral fixed axillary lymph nodes, which can be in between four to nine. And also there can be or there can be clinically detectable internal mammary lymph nodes. It comes as N2. N3 is on the ipsilateral side if there is more than 10 axillary lymph nodes or if there can be supraclavicular or infraclavicular lymph node metastasis or axillary lymph nodes plus internal mammary lymph nodes. If both metastasis is present, then it comes as N3. Then depending on the metastasis, M0 is no distant metastasis. If you have the distant metastasis, it is M1. So this is how we do the staging of the breast carcinomas. Now coming to the prognostic factors. The prognosis of the invasive carcinoma, it depends upon tumor size. That is, if it is a small tumor, less than 1 cm, good prognosis. If it's more than 2, more than 2 meters, it comes as T2. So it has a worse prognosis. Similarly, locally advanced disease, if it is infiltrating into the underlying muscle or the overlying skin, then it has a poor prognosis. And lymphovascular invasion, if you have lymphatic emboli or the vascular emboli, then also the patient will have poor prognosis. And lymph node metastasis, depending upon the number of lymph nodes involved, again, uh, the prognosis will be bad. Distant metastasis, if the patient has the distant metastasis again it is a the patient will have the poor prognosis then histological type as i told you inflammatory carcinoma has the worst prognosis this is because this type has invasion into the dermal lymphovascular channels so it metastasizes very fastly and it has poor prognosis then histological grade grade 3 has worst prognosis proliferative rate if the proliferative rate in the tumor is high obviously that means the tumor is proliferating very fastly so uh, the prognosis is bad in the molecular subtypes when you see the basal type that is a triple negative carcinoma it has the worst prognosis when compared to luminal type and how to reach then response to neoadjuvant therapy if the tumors respond to neoadjuvant chemotherapy it is it has a good prognosis and usually triple negative breast cancers and how to reach cancers they regress completely with chemotherapy whereas luminal type they respond to endocrine based treatment so if they respond to chemotherapy then again they have a good prognosis now that's about the morphology just we'll have a summary of what we have discussed so invasive carcinoma of no special type which is having desmoplastic stroma and the cells arranged as a tubular glandular pattern sheets cords and individually dispersed pattern lobular carcinoma where the typical pattern is individually dispersed monotonous population of the cells arranged in engine file pattern or the targetoid pattern and here we can see the signet ring cells also and medullary carcinoma we have the sheets of the tumor cells which are pleomorphic they have more mitotic figures and these sheets of the cells at the periphery we see a band of the lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate mucinous carcinoma more than 90% of the tumor should have this mucinous component and we see the pools of the mucin with the clusters of the cells floating in the pools of the mucin. Tubular carcinoma, it has a desmoplastic stroma and we have the cells arranged in the form of the tubules which are angulated and the cells have less pleomorphism, they show the apocrine snouts. Papillary carcinoma, we have the tumor cells lining the papillae with the fibrovascular core. Here also 90% of the tumor should have this papillary pattern to call it as papillary carcinoma. Then cribriform carcinoma, here we have the islands of the cells which are having the angulated counters and the islands of the cells, they will show rounded punched out spaces. And in the spaces again, we can find the apocrine snouts. It has been thought that this is a variant of tubular carcinoma. 
Now the apocrine carcinoma here we have the cells arranged as the sheets or the glandular pattern and we have two types of the cells cells having abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm type A cells and type B e cells where we have a foamy cytoplasm and the other rare types we have metaplastic micropapillary secretory low grade adenosquamous inflammatory and adenoid cystic carcinomas among all these carcinomas the worst prognosis is to the inflammatory type and the best prognosis will be for the cribriform and the tubular type of the carcinomas and then these all the carcinomas they are graded depending upon the nottingham's histological score now the scoring system is given depending upon the percentage of tubule formation nuclear pleomorphism and the mitotic rate then depending upon all this the grade the tumor stage the molecular subtypes and histological type the prognosis of this invasive carcinoma is uh, prognosis depends upon all these factors thank you friends so that finishes about the breast carcinomas thank you for listening patiently